Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome back to another video and we are doing the roundup for October and November. If you are new to this series, I swear I just talk about all the puzzles that I've done the previous month. And October was a weird month because my parents were in town for the first two weeks. And then when I came back, it was just like full on advent season. So I didn't do too many puzzles in October that were like standalone puzzles. So I thought I'd just like add the few that I had into this video where I'm just talking about all the puzzles I did in November. And I have quite a few puzzles to talk about. I have a couple larger piece counts, but then I did a lot of smaller piece counts just because mindset wise, I was just like in the mood to just like watch cozy TV while doing puzzles. And so that usually means like a smaller piece count in the evening, but I did do a couple harder ones. So I'm excited to show those to you today. And I am actually admitting all the advent calendars in this video. I did do those in October and November, which was quite a lot of pieces, but I didn't want to like have them mentioned again so if you want to see all the advents i'll link that down below anyways we're just going to get into this starting off with the largest one that i did which was this one from pin this is a 1200 piece christmas puzzle it's called santa christmas eve the artist is judith yates and i love this one um for one this one is easy because even though it's 1200 pieces it's broken up into 300 piece bags which i could have easily probably combined them all together and it still would have been like a fine puzzle to do i did do it though in like little bits so i would do 300 pieces one night 300 pieces the next night just because i wasn't in the mindset to do larger piece counts when i picked this one but i really love the image of this and so i was excited to be able to do a larger piece count but it was broken up into much manageable sections i did really enjoy this one definitely one that i would recommend and something i noticed with this one is that the Pinchu boxes changed. So I don't know if that's across the board with all their new stuff, but I am very excited about it. Um, it's not the sturdiest of boxes, but I do like the design a lot more. So I'm excited about it. It was definitely a really fun image to do. Definitely give me the Christmas spirit. And uh, as always, you can just like take it apart in little chunks. I just store right here for if I want to hang it up, I could um, in the future. So I liked it. I'll link it down below as well as any other puzzles that I'm mentioning here if I can find them. So that was a good one. The next one that I wanted to discuss, I lost the box. I don't know if I got rid of it or Dave threw it away, uh, but this is one that was by far the most challenging puzzle I've done in a very long time. So this is a puzzle I got from Japan. I have bought it like with crazy shipping costs and everything. And then someone mentioned in a comment like, hey, that's actually a Pintu brand. And I was like, what? And then I noticed that there's like a little tiny symbol on the back of the box that said it was Pintu. The piece count's weird. It's like 1,168. Like it's a very distinct exact amount of pieces. And this one is called Moomin. But I was excited to do this puzzle, but also really, really nervous because there's so much blue. Like I'm gonna show you this image because it's a pinchy puzzle, so it's still plastic. Um, but here is what it looks like. Like it's a lot of blue. And I will say, this was a tough one. And there are some things here that I don't particularly like about this style of Pintu, because it was definitely different than the regular Pintus that I've done. When I look at the Pintu puzzles that I've done recently, like pretty much all the other Pintus, you can see which are the edges of the image, but they're not necessarily the edges of the border, because that it, last edge is actually just plain white that you can just like add they're just generic pieces so that's the style i'm used to and they apply flat so you can put them in the frame it's super easy this type of image the edges are like these bendable raised pieces that are long and they do also just interchange so you can easily get them in the wrong spot they all kind of fit together they are numbered which is helpful um, but with the raised edge it makes it so that the whole puzzle kind of like lifts up. So when you're putting in pieces, it almost feels like you're breaking the puzzle because you have to like bend the puzzle down to the table to get it to snap into place. That was really kind of annoying the whole time I was doing the puzzle. Also something that I did not enjoy at the very end is that since it has a different type of frame, it's one that it's like these like little plastic pieces that go into the little slots and then you like fold over the puzzle edges to snap them into place and i will say that is so so hard to do uh, i actually had to do it in like little sections i could only do like five 
pieces at a time before like my hands just couldn't do anymore so I did not like the style of edges. I enjoyed the image and I will say it was challenging. It took me quite a few days. Just the yellow moon, um, this yellow moon here actually took me two separate Christmas movies to do. Like it's so much just plain yellow and then there's so much just shades of blue and there's really only like a handful of pieces that have like any other color so I did it I'm proud that I did it I really like the final image it just I don't know I kind of regret buying it um and I know it for sure if I saw a pinchy puzzle that had that type of border I would not go for it. I also want to mention that I did do a thousand piece that I don't have on hand because I did it for my DIY advent calendar video. That one was called Family Christmas and it was a beautiful image. I absolutely loved it. I feel like it was like the perfect amount of difficulty because there was just enough like snow and just enough of like the, the trees bits to make it somewhat tricky, but it was actually quite a simple puzzle to do and I really enjoyed that one. I also, I just love the piece cuts of Vermont Christmas Company. All right, moving on to my handful of 500 piece puzzles. This first one I did so long ago. I think I did like October 1st and I just never mentioned it here, but I did post it on my Instagram. So this one is by Unified Pieces. This was gifted to me along with a few others of theirs. This is a 500 piece one called The Castronaut, which is one that was on my wish list, and I loved it so much. Now Unified Pieces in Villager Puzzles tend to have the same manufacturer so there's a lot of similarities in those brands but there are definitely different creative differences with the box design and the things that are inside. Um, these ones are a bit more expensive also. I think they are range between like $36 to $38 versus the Villager Puzzles which I want to say is $26. So quite a bit more expensive, but um, you can see that there's a little bit, there's a few extra elements in here that definitely gives them a little bit of like uniqueness. And so this one here, as far as image goes, so much fun. Like I loved it so much. Even I was nervous because there's so much galaxy, but there was enough like shades of gradient pinks and purples that it was actually quite easy. Also, there's like little lines of the galaxy, so you can definitely use that. You can use different stars. So the little galaxy section wasn't as difficult as I was expecting. If you are new to this brand, it's similar again to Villager Puzzles, which I've talked about recently, but they have like a magnetic open up box and so the box is completely matte. There's a lot of great information on it. I'll definitely do a full review in the future for the brand once I did a couple of a thousand pieces. So it'll definitely be something in the future works but I really enjoyed this puzzle a lot. I'm excited to do the other two. The piece quality is just so good. So whatever manufacturer they are using I feel like more brands should follow suit because they're nice matte pieces. I had zero false fits, like everything fit beautifully. I had like a nice secure, like I could easily do the pickup test if I wanted to, like everything about this I love. And I'll definitely have a future video on this brand for sure. Next up, we have another Vermont Christmas company. Obviously, I'm doing quite a few of their images currently because it is that time of season. And so this one is called Christmas Cat Stamps. It's 550 pieces. I think I got this one gifted by Puzzle Warehouse, I believe. And so this one here, super cute image. There is, I think, 14 little kitties and cats in this image with different Christmas scenes. It was super fun, not a ton of fur, which was great. Um, a really quick and easy puzzle. And again, I like the piece shape of the Vermont Christmas Company pieces. I just liked them. Also, they're just cute little kitties. There's a lot of ginger kitties here, which I can definitely see this is Oliverville. This one looks more like Loki, but the, the uh, personality is definitely an Oliver. I feel like the one sleeping under the tree is a Loki. He just sits there and like looks at the lights. Um, but super cute image, definitely recommend if you are wanting a good Christmas puzzle. Um, I just have been enjoying their stuff a lot recently. And then next up we have this one, which I did also a very long time ago. I did this when my mom was here. We did this one together and it was so much fun, both as like a puzzle, but also just experience to puzzle with my mom. This one is from Evo. It's called 100 Great Words. This was gifted to me by a subscriber. And this one was so much fun. I loved it. Um, I love puzzles with words. This was very quick, very easy. Just a lot of stuff to work from. Um, I We did it by, we worked by color. So I would do pink, she would do green. Like we would just like pick whichever color. Something that we noticed about halfway through, because the whole time we were doing it, we were kind of just like, I wonder what that word means. That's an interesting word. They should tell us what the definitions are, which they do uh, in the cover. 
Um, they actually tell every single word what it means and how to use it in a sentence. So once we discovered that, whenever we finished a word, we would like put it in a sentence. And then we tried to do a few I tried to add some to our vocabulary for the rest of the vacation. And so we were trying to like come up with these like crazy sayings that would like these really interesting words and it was fun. Um, so I really like this one, definitely recommend. And again, Ibu is one of those brands that I'm just like, I love their images. I have a fun time doing it. Are they my favorite? No, but you know, you, you really can't go wrong. So I really like that one. Next up we have two 500 piece Rappensburgers. I actually signed up to go to nationals in March, which is super exciting. I am not a speed puzzler. I'm really just going to like meet puzzle friends. A few of my puzzle friends that I met at Puzzle Jam South had asked if I was going and I was like, I don't know. And so I am going and I'm meeting a bunch of people there and I'm just excited to see everyone again. Um, one person that I haven't seen in a couple of years and I'm so excited. Um, so I don't expect to win but I also don't want to be the worst. <laughs> and so I did do a couple 500 pieces just to get a grasp of how fast I am and just to get a little bit of practice in before doing it for real in person. So I did two 500 piece Ravensburgers. I was able to get these from the puzzle library that is near me. So that way I didn't have to pay for them, which was awesome. And so this one here, I loved. It was such a good image. This one is called Hot Air Hero. And it's a little hot air balloon with this really fun, beautiful scenery. And I love this one. I feel like the sky was perfect. Like there's a net, there's like so much gradient to work from and the bright colorful hot air balloon was easy to work from. And then even down here was pretty good too. I was able to finish it in 84 minutes, which was better than my expected time. I was usually puzzle a 500 piece, like two hours, maybe down to an hour and a half, depending on the image. So I was happy with my 84 minutes. It's under the hour and a half mark. My goal is to at least like finish during the two hour time frame. So my expectations aren't like super, super high, but I am happy that I finished it within the hour and a half. So, you know, I'm, I'll take that. And then the second one I did was this one called Hang Loose. So for me, this image would have been more challenging because the blue here is the same shade and it's a good like quarter to third of the puzzle. It's just like the same shade of blue, not too many clouds to work from. And then I was able to finish this one in 80 minutes, 80 minutes and 16 seconds. So I'm pretty happy with that considering how much sky there was. So the both of them were super fun, very bright, colorful, really can't go wrong. Now moving into my 300 pieces, again, I was definitely leaning towards those those smaller piece counts. I think partly because I had done this one and so I would do like a smidgen of this one and then move on to a 300 piece one because I just, that one was so much brain power. So I end up doing quite a bit 300 pieces. Uh, let's just go first here. We have Let It Snow. This one is by Seiko and it's just like really fun Christmas scene. I got this one with a gift card, I think, um, from Puzzle Warehouse. And I liked it. It was definitely on the thinner piece side, which I noticed with quite a few of the Seiko 300 pieces, but I don't mind because surface wise, they're just like large and in charge and they make me happy. This one did not take me long at all. I really liked the image and you know, it was fun. Next up, we have this one, which I loved. It was so fun. I got this one from the Puzzle Library near me. So this one is called Frederick the Literate. And so here is what it looks like. It's this little kitty stuck in a bookshelf. He's sleeping away. There's lots of like little knickknacks around it with some books. Very easy, simple image. I love this one. I did it in, in my puzzle vlog, I believe. And it was fun. I absolutely have been loving this puzzle library. It's something that's close to me that I can just like borrow some puzzles. They recently redid the library. So it's just all holiday, which I'm very tempted to go back to. So I'm trying to finish, I think I have two puzzles left. I have one Ravensburger that I picked up and then I have a pomegranate that I wanna do before I like head that way. So those are ones that are definitely on my to-do list first because I wanna get some of those Christmas puzzles. Um, next we have this one from Bits and Pieces. This one is called Bountiful Meadows Farm. And I really enjoyed this one as well. A nice, quick, simple puzzle that I did in the evening with my puzzle table. And it was just a good time. I forget what I was watching. I think I was watching that, oh, is that Disney? Noelle. 
I think it's called Noel on Disney Plus. And that is such a cute little Christmas movie. I was doing this at the same time. It was just a, like a cozy evening. I liked it. This isn't the normal style I would go for, but it was 300 pieces. There was enough to work from. It ended up being a really cute image. And it, it was the most like Thanksgiving y. That's right. I did it on Thanksgiving. So um, it, was, it was a cute little image. I liked it. <laughs> Moving on to this one. Okay, I think this one officially is my most redone puzzle in my collection, like hands down. I think I've done this one at least four times just this year alone. I did it once last year. It's just like pretty, you know, pretty and simple. It's just like a little Greek scene, um, but I, I just, I love it. So this one is called Santa Ramona Sunset. I did it when my mom was here because she knows how much I have done this one. So we did it together. I did the top part, which was all the sky. She did the bottom half and it was just a really good time. It's, a, it's just a good one. I don't know how to describe it other than like, it just, there's a, a lot to work from, and it's just like nice and calm. I don't know, I like it. Um, and then this one here surprised me for a few reasons. I just didn't pay attention to the box. This, this one is from Cobble Hill, it is called Earth Day. I got this one thrifted, which I was so excited to find at the thrift store because I have a puzzle shop that I go to called Wishes that's near me. There's a few different locations in Washington and they sold this puzzle there. And I was always looking at it because I'm like, ooh, that looks really fun and bright and colorful. I like chunky thick pieces. But I really didn't want to spend like the $22 for a smaller piece count. Here's just a little side note because I have that thought process because I always think like I don't mind spending $20 on a 1000 piece because I'll have like six to eight, 10 hours to do that puzzle. But what I'm realizing now is that my smaller piece counts, I do over and over again. Like this one here, I paid full price for, I want to say I've spent like $17.99, $18.99 or something like that. And for me, that's kind of pricey for a 300 piece puzzle, but I've done it so many times and it's held up to the standard and quality. Like I've had no wear and tear. So for me, I'm almost considering like more, my 300 pieces are investments because those are ones that I'm going to be doing again and again versus my 1000 piece ones I might do once, you know? So those are my thoughts on the 300 pieces. So for this one, I didn't want to spend the money full price. But when I found it thrifted, I was so excited. So I didn't pay attention to the box. I just thought, super large family size pieces. In my head, I was thinking like just like larger pieces to do with children or maybe like grandparents or someone who has handling issues. But this one has really cool pieces. Like the, the concept is, I feel like a little genius because the top part of the puzzle, I'd say like a good like third, they're all these like massive jumbo size pieces, like bigger than like a 100 piece puzzle piece. Like they're huge and they're so much fun to put together. So this part would be great for again, children, or I know a few of you have dementia patients or they have family with dementia, um, or you are someone who has handling issues. Like for me on an RA day, like this part, was so good um, and so it's meant to be able to be done with a few people so you can have like your kids or the person who wants the larger pieces to be up here and then you could go do the bottom half which are these smaller normal size pieces there's also some mid-sized pieces that like kind of connects the two and I just feel like it's such a good idea because for me also sometimes when I puzzle with other people I'm such a faster puzzler than them I almost feel bad sometimes because I'm almost like taking over the puzzle um, so it's nice to have like sections that you could do versus what they could do so you could still I'm kind of puzzled at the same speed, but maybe you are doing way more pieces than they are. So I just liked it a lot and I spent $4.99 on it. So I'm happy with that purchase. And then finally moving on to some wooden puzzles. These are smaller piece counts. I'm not going to touch base much on the victory puzzles. I did do three of them. These were gifted to me by the brand to do for the Puzzle Warehouse blog, which should be up like the first week of December. Um, and so I did all three of these. I really enjoyed them. And there will be a review, I think next week or the week after. It has to like coincide with the blog date. So um, when that goes up, I'll let you guys know so you guys can read it, but also you can see the full video review of these puzzles. But the three that I did, we have Cafe Terrace at Night, which is like a nice Van Gogh scene. 
We have this one, which actually surprised me of how much I liked it. This one is called Winter Garden Robin. And the style isn't normally what I go to, but I actually really, really like this image a lot. Um, this nice snowy winter scene. I just love the pieces so much. And then the third one I did was this one called uh, Life. It's called The Flapper Life 1922. I just know a lot of information about this brand because I had to do the feature for the blog post. So I'm excited to share with you that blog, but also the video that will be going along with it. So just stay tuned for that. Um, the next one we have is a Wentworth puzzle. This is a 250 piece called Christmas Morning. Here is the cover there. Um, I just really like this one. I was able to get this one half off because I'm in their email group. And sometimes you get like random coupons or deals. So this one was half off when I got it, which was awesome. Cause I wanna say it was around like $25, which is a great price for a Wentworth puzzle. 250 pieces, love the image, love the thickness of the pieces. Like it's just a good time. So this one I really enjoyed. And I definitely recommend going on their email list cause I feel like I, quite frequently see like just like a one-off that that puzzle is on sale sometimes 25 sometimes up to 50 percent off which is great and then finally the last little bit that i'll discuss is this little wentworth uh cracker puzzle it's called festive gingerbread house it's only 36 pieces but if you're looking for some like cute stocking stuffers for a puzzle lover um i would suggest these because it was super fun uh, it, I got this one from Puzzle Jam South. It was in our little goodie bag and I waited until now to do it. And it was just a cute little like treat in the evening. Um, it comes in a little tiny bag like this and the pieces are, are a good size. They're not quite micro puzzles, but they aren't their normal sizes either. I just really enjoyed it. It was a nice little treat. And if you're going to be like gifting a Wentworth, I definitely think this would be a nice like little addition to a gift. Um, but that's it for me today. I feel like I was very rambly, so I apologize for that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic December, and I hope you all had a really great Thanksgiving if you celebrate. And that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for a lot of videos to come. If you're not subscribed, I would love if you subscribe to my channel. But that's it for me. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys!